3,000 miles from home, there's a place made of epic views and intimidating landscapes. A massive mountain range seems close enough to touch until you learn that it's 100 miles away. Weather that changes dramatically. Glassy seas give way to towering swells without warning. And below the waterline, an entire universe hidden by dark, frigid waters. The type of fishing that happens here is not you versus the fish. It's you versus the environment. And in 72 hours, this town will be completely different. But right now, it's on. This is what it's like to be inside a postcard. Sitka, Alaska is a jaw-dropping, jagged panorama on the edge of nowhere chiseled over millions of years. Only accessible by air or sea, Sitka is located on the west side of Baranoff Island in the Alaska Panhandle. It's the largest incorporated city in the U.S. 2,874 square miles. The recreational fishing season lasts less than four months, yet makes a $639 million economic impact in a single year. All kinds of businesses are rooted in these waters. Marinas, lodges, restaurants, bait shops, boatyards, breweries, here, fishing is more than just a livelihood. It's life. In three days, the fishing season is over. The lodges close, relentless blankets of snowfall, and the seasonal workers leave for winter jobs. But today, this rugged frontier is open for business. We land knowing this is the last trip of the season. The weather will be tough. The days will be long. Now a quarter century old, Kingfisher Lodge is perched among the evergreens on the shores of Sitka Sound. It's the type of place where childhood friends and fathers and sons reconnect with nature and each other. It's all about the fishing here. In the 80-seat dining room, camaraderie is in full effect as people from all walks of life trade stories and brag about the day's catch. In our deluxe guest room, the big screen TV and remote collect dust, as they should. It doesn't get more high definition than the view of the fishing grounds outside the window. Nature's alarm clock doesn't let guests sleep in. We welcome it, because for us, every second of daylight counts. The Kingfisher fleet boasts 14 aluminum boats. They are built like tanks, customized for the region's harsh conditions. Inside the kerosene-heated pilot house of the 32-foot Chilcat, we get to know our guide, Captain Clinton Chambers. Clinton grew up between California and Idaho and enjoys the trademark pastimes of both of his home states. It's a pretty good time up here. This is what we do throughout the summer. And uh, come September 9th, you know, we're pretty much done. Done for our season. So what do you do? You go back to skiing? Go back to skiing. Uh, go back down to... Uh, fly fishing, fishing in Idaho? So, yeah, a little fly fishing, some skiing, and come back up here in February for a little bit. And yeah. Back and forth. And surfing in between? You can. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you get away. And yes, there are surf breaks in Sitka. It's a typical gray morning, 
A passing front gives way to light winds and dropping humidity. The tide is high. The gear is packed. The Chilcat and its crew head westward into the depths of the Pacific. At a depth of 80 feet, we start a run at King and Silver Salmon using a hoochie rig, which consists of around 30 inches of leader with a rubber skirt jig and flasher. The Kings and Silvers feed aggressively in the morning light. The flashers and skirts at trolling speed garner just enough attention to warrant a strike. Oh, hey guys, got a fish on right there. Chinook Salmon, known as the King for its large size and flavorful flesh, is the state fish of Alaska. Come on, MacGyver net. Can we get right in front Ready? of you? Big fish, <laughs> big fish. Ready? Yep. Nice king. <laughs> buddy. Absolutely. Look at that guy. That is a nice fish right there. Look at the nice little slime plus pounder. On. Yeah. Nice, man. It's a beautiful fish. Good job. Look at the scars on its head, on its beak and everything from just going through the gravel and whatnot. Let's go get under. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see why not. They can grow to over 100 pounds. This 15-pounder is destined for the dinner plate. Here we go. Fish on. Silvers are the nickname for coho salmon and are one of the most popular game fish in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to scoop, and there we go. Fish on the boat, fish on the boat. Nice little, oh, big silver salmon. Oh, fish on, right there, get him. Even average-sized fish are fun to wrestle when you're catching them back to back. Here it is. Go ahead and keep on coming. Nice king. Master King. Boom. That's beautiful. Yeah. Good fish, buddy. Got a big double here, buddy. King, king salmon and uh, silver salmon. How old is that guy? Couple years old, three years old. Out here feeding. Same with this guy. He's gonna go up and spawn though and finish his journey. He might as well. A long way to go. Oh my God. All the way out to Idaho. They're healthy, you buddy. Never know. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it is, buddy. Thanks, bud. Yeah, Good absolutely. Help. Anytime. Salmon can travel the length of a marathon in one day. They move from salt to fresh water to spawn and die. It's a rough and tumble underdog that won't give up. It gets pounded over and over, but won't willingly throw in the towel. Only by design do they call it quits. But why do they do it? And why here? Sport Fishing Television is brought to you by Ram Trucks, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. Buy Yellowfin, your legacy. Buy Simrad, go with confidence. And buy Mercury Marine, number one on the water. looks delicious, but it begs the question, why do these knockabout salmon matter? Most people know them for their most famous roles. Entree, sushi, tonight's special. But it extends much further than that. Before the kitchen and the market's display cooler, the salmon is the center of Alaska's marine universe. They are more than just good table fare. Salmon are the essential ingredient of these parts. Touching everything in its path, salmon are the biological foundation of the world around them. It's why the Sitka Conservation Society and the Alaska Department of Fish and Game Sustainable Salmon Fund have committed resources to conduct a multi-year salmon habitat restoration program. Their protection is vital. Salmon transfer nutrients from the ocean to all aspects of the world around them, both above and below. They are the link between the forest and their inhabitants. They sustain grizzlies and brown bears, birds of prey, 
sea lions, whales, and the krill and plankton they feed on. And of course, us. Back at the lodge, a fish processing crew of four tackle up to 300 pounds each day, the majority being salmon. In less than a minute's time, they are filleted and cleaned, then packed up in coolers, ready for the guests to take home. But it starts here. This is where it all begins and ends. The creeks and river beds are both womb and tomb for these salmon. This time of year we find pink salmon, otherwise known as humpies, undertaking their spawning run. Once bright and silver in the ocean, humpies return to spawn as pale gray elders. Spawning occurs from June until October. While the females are busy laying up to 2,000 eggs, the males are fighting and scrapping. But not everything is doom and gloom, because none of this is possible without a little love. The humpies pulled from the creeks will go to good use as bait for our next targets. The creatures of the deep. The ones with a face only a mother could love. With bottom fish, you never know what might be lurking beneath. Sport Fishing Television, powered by Ram Trucks, is being brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. By Penn, let the battle begin. And by King Sailfish Mounts, for that once in a lifetime catch. Driven to Fish, powered by Ram Trucks. As we idle into a back bay of Sitka Sound, a dense gunmetal gray haze takes over. Sun, moon, who knows what's out there? But here, on this custom-built fishing machine, the gear is ready. So we're gonna be using these dart jigs, about 60 feet of water, we're gonna find some structure and some biomass, maybe hopefully find some uh, school of black bass. Get on them, start jigging, All right. feel a bite, hit the hook. Okay. All right. Black sea bass. Not Chilean, but just as delicious. Jigs are employed to mimic herring, their preferred meal. This respot brings them right to us. Coming in, coming in hot. The jigs never even hit the bottom. And in less than an hour, we hit our limit. Captain Chambers puts us on ling cod. Using salmon belly from our earlier catch, we lure them away from the deep, rocky ledges and caves along the drop off. These pretty fellas go by a few nicknames. Gator bass, Godzilla, Lingosaur, and for good reason. While ling cod are quite tasty, it's not gonna show up on a plate next to garnish without a serious battle. Use heavy leader and a strong rod. Expect to spend some time pinned to the rail when there's a dragon on the line, especially if it's a big one. They can weigh as much as 80 pounds. 
yellow eye rockfish. A bit of an outcast with its bright Caribbean coloring. A mix of orange, red, and yellow. It looks like it belongs near a tropical coral reef. Not in the subterranean waters where sunlight isn't welcome or appreciated. We move off the shelf to 600 feet and anchor up. Not another boat in sight. Hardly another sight in sight. It feels still for the moment. The anticipation builds, the uneasy feeling of not knowing what swims below. The chum is prepped and the lines go down. Then the barn doors show up. Sport Fishing Television is being brought to you by Ram Trucks, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, ram. By King Sailfish Mounts for that once in a lifetime catch. By the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And by Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there. See that bucket right there? A coagulated cocktail of blood and guts from the pink salmon we caught that morning. Appetizers for what lies beneath. Halibut, the largest flatfish. They look like a scaled barn door or doormat. To the untrained eye, it's a mutation. Some kind of overgrown flounder. Halibut are at times too large to haul onto the boat. Weighing as much as 500 pounds, some anglers have had to tow them to shore. Fish on, fish on, fish on. When the first doormat finds the bait, the reeling begins. It's a little guy, but it's still fish to the boat. We release a few of the smaller fish that locals call chickens. A decade from now, a chicken could be the size of a refrigerator. But you got something. I think there's a boot on the end there's of this There's a thing. little boot, a, a head shaky boot. Concrete block, Jimmy Hoffa. Oh, oh, that's yeah. pulling drag, buddy. Ooh. Oh. Oh, see, that's fantastic. You got a little more weight. The last couple ones. A little halibut action on the jig, buddy. You'd be a keeper. I'm gonna stick this dude, though. Oh, yeah. He's definitely a keeper. To qualify for the fish box, an Alaskan halibut must be up to 42 inches, or over 80 inches, known as a soaker. Uh, big fish, big fish. Going in the well. This one got a little more bounce to it. Oh, yeah. Probably have to throw this guy back. He's probably going to be too big. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, never know. Manually winching up 100 pounds from 600 feet isn't a fun feat. Here he comes. You see him? Yeah but it's a beautiful thing to see that odd face when it hits daylight. Oh, that's a nice one. It's a beautiful Thank fish. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, watch out. She's all good. There you go. Want to measure her out and see yeah. how big she is? Let's do it. What's she is about 58 inches. What's it going to be? 80. <laughs> <laughs> Still a nice fish. Pretty close. Get her back in. Yep. Slide her through the yep. door. Yeah, and push her through. Yeah. Awesome. Took off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> Sweet. The conditions are finicky and unpredictable. But fishing with our guide Clinton makes for great days on the water. Ear to ear grins when the drag screams and the fish come in. Check that guy out, dude. That's a nice fish. Look at the hook nose. Is this is about as big as they get for real. Uh, oh, they get bigger. Let's go get another one. And the spectacular sights make you forget when they don't. 
three days gone. Just like that. Are there even enough days to see it all? The landscape, the wildlife, and the fish keep going and going. That's oh. beautiful. Maybe that's why nature keeps the lights on all summer long in this part of the world. It all adds up to one truth. From creek to cove, and forest to fathom, Sitka is one of our great recreational fisheries. For all its exotic wildness and wonder, Sitka isn't exactly another world. There is a familiar feel to it. Sitka is a story we didn't write, but we've heard it before. It's been told endlessly to countless generations, from land to sea and back again. What's the story? All things are connected from the fish and whales in the blue, to the bears along the banks, to the sea lions on the rocks. Just one big happy biomass. And let's not forget, we are part of it too.